Okay, so a student shared with me a problem about a rock climber in a chimney sort of wedging themselves uh, up between the two slabs of rock. And the idea is that the feet, this is the feet, has a force of friction uh, with a coefficient of friction, let's call that mu1. And the back also has another coefficient of friction, let's call that mu2. Uh, and the weight of the uh, person is also known. So the problem tells us that the person has reduced their back against the rock until their back and shoes are just on the verge of slipping. And it's asking about the magnitude of each of the forces of push against two columns of rock. So what makes this problem just a little bit hard is that the shape is funky, but we're still abstractly treating it as a free body diagram. Right? We're almost kind of treating them as a point mass. But as always, we have a force of gravity um, bring them down. And uh, we just got to think about what other forces are acting. So if the feet are pushing against the wall, right, there's sort of a, let's call it a force of normal acting on the wall. By Newton's third law, uh, that same force is going to be acting on this person. So uh, let's draw that as F and one, right? So against the left wall, uh, pushing against the left wall means that they're going to be pushed towards the right. So that's why I've drawn this in this direction. Okay, so by the same logic, uh, they're back pushing against the uh, pushing against the other side, let's call that F and two, means that by equal and opposite reactions, there is going to be a F and two on them to the left. Now, now to be clear, this force over here is the force she applies to the wall, and the force over here is the force she applies to the other wall. But for the purposes of the free body diagram, the forces applied to her are the ones uh, are the ones I've drawn like centered around here. Yeah. So what else needs to uh, be accounted for here? There's two forces of friction, yes? There's a force of friction one uh, from the uh, from over here, the point of contact over here. I'm just drawing it near the center. And there's a force of friction two from this other wall that uh, I've also drawn towards the center. You know, I hope that uh, this isn't too confusing, right? We're still sort of treating them, like funny enough, we're still treating them as sort of a point mass, even though the diagram is kind of funky. But uh, yeah, at this point, we have pretty much all we need to solve. It's just the setup of this problem is kind of tricky, but uh, solving shouldn't be too bad. So what do we know? We know that in the horizontal direction, uh, the person is uh, static, right? There's no movement, there's no acceleration, which means that the only two forces in the horizontal direction, uh, the sum of all the forces is equal to zero. So Fn1 is equal to Fn2, right? And it's basically saying their feet are pushing at the same force as their back. Uh, so with that in mind, now let's look at the vertical direction. The vertical direction is saying that all of their forces are also canceling out because they're not moving up or down. Their uh, acceleration is zero. So again, this is sort of the sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration, acceleration is zero. Okay, that means that the force of friction uh, one plus force of friction two minus force of gravity has got to all be equal to zero. And from the first part, we know that the two forces of uh, force normals are equal to each other. So rewriting the force frictions as mu1 times force normal and mu2 times force normal uh, gives us the equation, the crucial equation. And at this point, all you need to do is solve for Fn. So yeah, that's all there is to it, right? Just uh, think for these problems, uh, you always have to think through and uh, figure out what the free body diagrams ought to look like. And a lot of the time, you'll find that after writing down the equation, there's not much more to the problem. Uh, what else should I say about this? Um, yeah, should it have one of the things I wanted you to know is that right away we should have been able to know that the uh, normal forces um, are uh, equal to each other because she's not moving in left or right, which kind of gives us the clue that um, pretty much all the work, uh, not physics work, but like all the problem solving work is sort of done in the vertical equation. Uh, what else is there to say about this? Um, yeah, although the force of normals are equal to each other, the force of frictions may not be. Because uh, because they may have different uh, coefficients of friction, and uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much everything there is to say about that problem. So good luck solving.